whether you're in the sanctuary or watching online. It's good to be together to worship and fellowship together. Some of us have had a great week. For some of us, there's been sadness. For, that, for others, it's been too busy. Whatever you faced last week, remember there is someone who cares about you and wants to share your struggles, concerns, and also good times. We have a great God who can meet all our needs. Possibly not quite the way we would want, but probably a lot better. So as we sing and worship together and listen to his word, may we allow his spirit or his peace to fill our hearts and our minds. This morning, Kim will again open the book of Colossians for us. Last week, she suggested we read through the entire book of Colossians. I did that, and there's a lot in that book. For those who are able to stand, uh, stand, please stand for the call to worship and remain standing for singing. And I'm reading from Colossians 1, verse 9 to 14. And this is Paul speaking to the Colossians and also to us. Verses we heard last week, but good to hear again. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father, he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transfer transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, that you have purchased our freedom through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the peace that you give and the inheritance we have. Thank you for your amazing grace. Bless us this morning as we wor worship and fellowship together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to be with you all this morning, either in person or online. And so continue standing for, for worship this morning. And if there are any kids that want to come and play instruments or, or dance with the ribbons, anything at the front, there's a desk, uh, bench at the front, so you're welcome to, to come up and and join with us. <clears throat>
I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see His love and mercy watching over all our sin. Step down from glory to where my 
be seated as we pray for the for the offering and so yeah let's pray together father you've blessed us all in so many different ways and i know we all have different paths that we're on and you're with us in different different ways but one of the blessings that you give us is time to be together and also time to give to others and so whether it's giving our time or our presence or our care or our financial support, whatever that may be. God, thank you for your blessings and help us to bless others too. Amen. Amen. Victor. 
Children can be dismissed to supervised playtime and make sure a parent can, or a, uh, an adult can sign them in as well. Some announcements for this morning. After the service, join us in the gym for our annual spring finance meeting. And you'll want to be there because you get a free lunch. And there's no Sunday school this week. Uh, you're invited to take part in this year's Lent giving project. They're collecting hygiene items for 188 Church. And there's more information in the foyer. And there's another chance to share. Colleen needs, knows a couple of newcomer moms who are looking for some assistance. One needs a microwave and the other one needs a bunk bed. If you need, if you can help, please talk to Colleen. And then the MB Church of Manitoba Assembly of Churches is March the 1st and 2nd in the Fort Garry MB Church. If you want to be a delegate, please contact the church office. And then I, Again, a reminder about the spring break day camp, March 25th to 28th. Registration is open for the camp and volunteers are needed for a wide range of activities. Contact Monica for more information and sign up in the foyer. You can read more about these things in the handout from the ushers. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love, mercy, and grace in our lives. We come here with different needs and concerns and we commit ourselves to you. We pray for comfort those who need comfort, for healing for those who need healing, for peace for those who are experiencing conflict, for strength and grace to work in each one of our lives. We pray for our government here in Winnipeg, in Manitoba, in Canada, around the world. May they look up to you for guidance and ask for wisdom to make right decisions. We pray for the Ukraine and Israel. We pray that the wars might cease. May nations on, around the world strive for peace and the well-being of their people. Thank you for our church. We with all those involved in the many programs in our church, that you might use these efforts to help people find you and experience your goodness and kindness and grace. We thank you for Kim. Give her strength and encouragement and peace in her ministry. Bless her as she speaks this morning. May we all learn from you. Above all, may we clothe ourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading may be found in page 903 in the Pew Bibles in front of you. Reading from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. 
But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stopped for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all, wis all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to, to him, to God the Father. And chapter 4, verses 2 to 6. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Pray for us, too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. It's good to be together. It's always good to be together on Sundays. Thanks, Matt, for reading, and thanks to the team for leading us in song and Henry. It takes a lot of people to put a Sunday morning together, not just this part, but that part out there, too. So I always appreciate everyone that's part of a Sunday. Last week, uh, we took a look at the first two chapters of Colossians, uh, chapters 1 and 2. Today, we're going to look at chapter 3 and 4, and this is a really quick overview of Colossians. I hope that some of you had a chance to read it during the week. I encourage you to read Colossians. I hope some of you took me up on that invitation. Um, so just a bit of a recap before we dive into chapters 3 and 4, a recap from last week. Just a few things. Paul wrote this letter from prison. Paul had never met the people of this church. He had heard about them from Epaphras, who was the one who had taken the gospel there and shared that with them. Uh, the church was in Colossae, which is now a part of Turkey. And this was a young church, probably not more than eight years old, and most of them probably had a Gentile background. Paul had been praying for these people. He had heard good things about this congregation, and this letter was meant to encourage them. It's kind of a tough letter, but it's not about making them feel bad or guilty, but rather encouraging them in the huge change that happens when uh, we decide to follow Jesus. And so right in the beginning of the letter, Paul talked about their faith and their hope and their love. And these are kind of three main building blocks of Christian faith or following Jesus, not just for them then, but even for us today. Those are the qualities that should be in the lives of individual Christians, but also evident within the Christian community. They should be part of being a Jesus follower, faith, hope and love. 
Faith reaches out to what God has to offer. Faith is saying yes to Jesus. Love binds the community together as we love God and we love one another. Um, we know the New Testament has so much to say about love, and love really binds the community together. And hope, hope looks ahead to what God is going to complete. Reconciliation between humanity and God, and also eternal life with God one day. In chapter 1, verse 6, we read, This same good news that came to you is going out over all the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. Changing lives, that's a really important piece of this letter to the Colossians. Becoming and being a Christian should be a life-changing experience. Not just that initial change when someone says yes to Jesus. A lot of times people don't experience a lot of change right in the beginning. It comes as we grow and learn and um, walk with Jesus. In chapter 2, Paul said, Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Follow is a verb, not a noun. Follow is ongoing. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. And then your faith will grow strong and in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. So faith, hope, and love, a life changed by Jesus and an ongoing effort to keep and grow the faith. Paul also had a bit of a warning from the people um, from becoming too concerned with the rules, uh, the rules that were trying to be enforced by the synagogue that, that was around them. So now, as we head into chapters 3 and 4, there's a bit of a shift, some really practical instructions uh, with the introduction that says, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Set your sights on the realities of heaven. You've probably heard Christian people say things like, um, this world is not our home, or we are citizens of heaven. There's a lot of sayings about heaven that Christians use, um, referring to heaven as being our real home. And often, near the end of life, a lot of Christian people will say, well, I just want to go home. I'm sure we've all known somebody, an older, uh, maybe a grandparent or an older parent that in the last stages of life have said, I'm just ready to go home. Well, when we were newly married, we had four grandparents between us. I had two grandmas, and uh, Gerald had a set of grandparents that were in their 90s, early 90s. And I remember visiting them, Gerald's grandparents, and being newly married, and his grandpa was really, like, talked about Jesus coming back all the time. And he would say, don't you hope Jesus comes soon? And I was just this young, newly married woman, and I think I gave kind of a funny smile and a nod. Sure, sure. <laughs> and then he'd say, don't you hope he comes tonight? <laughs> and I never answered, because I didn't want to lie, and I was thinking, not really. <laughs> Those Questions continued over the years. I remember visiting with a baby on my lap being asked, don't you hope Jesus comes tonight? And I thought, no, I don't. Because Grandpa had enjoyed 90 plus years of living, and I hadn't. And I was looking forward to life. But Grandpa had a heavenly mindset. He'd had this great long life and was looking forward to going home. Well, the other day, Gerald and I were sitting and having some coffee and talking about different things going on around the world and different social issues that are so hard, and we wondered what the implications were or would be for our granddaughters. What would their futures be like? And I said, now I know why old people say it's time for Jesus to come, because maybe he should come soon. And please understand, I am not making light of Jesus coming back. I'm not. I'm acknowledging that while we're encouraged to set our sights on heaven, it plays out differently in different seasons of our lives. 
When we're young with our whole life in front of us, we are hopeful and we're, we're not jaded and we think we can change the world. And as we get older and we find out that life is hard and life is full of challenges, it, you just start to shift your thinking. And I think as you get older and you, we think of our granddaughters, I think, wow, what lies ahead for them? Maybe it's time for Jesus to come back. Last week, I shared about my cousin who had passed away. She was very heavenly minded. Her family said she often talked about heaven, and that was largely in part because her husband had died 25 years earlier, and so heaven had a different tug on her heart. Paul said, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. So we're to have this heavenly mindset, but that's not just about wanting to go there. Sure, that is part of it. Absolutely, that's a big part of our faith is this hope and promise of eternity with Jesus. And Paul wrote, one day we will share the glory of Christ. But while we're on earth, and life is sometimes messy, we know that, we are to fix our minds and thoughts on the things of heaven the ways of heaven, rather than being tugged and influenced by the ways of the world. And so that's where he's going with this. There is one way that the world does life and another way that followers of Jesus are to do life. And so Paul was talking about dying to the worldly life and focusing on the ways of Christ, the ways that followers of Jesus should live. As he wrote, let your roots grow down into Jesus. In our North American culture, uh, materialism is rampant, and Christians struggle with it too. So this letter to the Colossians and these warnings and, and um, explanations of life be without Jesus and with Jesus, our earthly nature is still very much relevant to us. Today, I think it's safe to say that morality has become anything goes. And I think we can see that people are often hurt. Um, it's not a healthy way for people to live when anything goes. Theologian N.T. Wright suggests that the freedom of choice is one of the idols of our time. That freedom of choice is an idol of our time. People want to create their own truth, their own beliefs, their own standards, and what often amazes me is that so many people do so without any kind of foundation. They're not building on a foundation of, of Christian beliefs or even other beliefs or laws. It's just simply what they themselves come up with, and that should be okay. Well, there's a lot of different things that impact us in life. Um, if sex was no big deal, as the world would have you believe, then why are there so many people who are broken because of abuse or choices they made but regret? Money. Money has become one of the things that drives many people, but you will rarely hear anyone talk about giving generously. Yet Jesus did so often. In fact, Jesus talked about money more than he talked about sex. Power or status is another lure of the world. Again, Jesus modeled and taught servant leadership. One of the main verses we looked at last week was from 2, 7, 2, chapter 2, verse 7. Let your roots grow down into him, and I've already mentioned this a couple times. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong and you will overflow with thankfulness. Roots grow slowly and over time. I, I love this root analogy. They keep the tree grounded, they keep the soil in place, and they feed the tree. Healthy roots keep trees grounded, standing upright, and then the, the trees help the other trees. Healthy, taller, older trees often shelter new growth. So using the metaphor of healthy roots for us, uh, means that when we are growing healthy roots, it's not just good for us as individuals, but it's good for the whole community. We work on growing together, and we do better as a community when we all have healthy roots. 
Let your roots grow down into him. Well, Paul went on, and we've heard this list, but I'm going to remind us of it. Paul went on to describe what humanity is like apart from Jesus. Paul said, so put to death the earthly things lurking within you. Now, that's the NLT, but that really struck me, like lurking within you. Put these things to death. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. And you used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger and rage and malicious behavior and slander and dirty language. And then he went on to challenge them, inspire them, encourage them. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. That's a tough one, isn't it? Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And above all, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And the peace that comes from Christ will rule in your hearts. For members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So if we compare those two passages, our earthly nature versus what we're supposed to strive for, it's quite the contrast. Again, here's what Paul says lurks in humans. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, worshiping things of the world, anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language. That is awful. Um, That's quite a list. And here's what we're supposed to strive for. Tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, allowing, making allowance for each other's faults, forgiving, and clothing ourselves with love which binds us all together. Again, back to love being good for the community. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts and always be thankful. Also quite a list, but imagine a world where everyone strived to live like that. This isn't about God trying to put restrictions on us to keep us from having fun with that first list, But rather, this is what's best for us. This is the best way for humanity to live. And if everyone strived to live like that, the world would be a very different place. Paul wrote to these Christians, encouraging them that Jesus was the answer. Jesus, who was the creator, the one who revealed God, the one who showed us how to live, and also empowers us to live that way. Because, of course, I think we all know we can't live that way on our own. We can see that it's encouraging, this letter, but we can also see that it's tough because Paul doesn't mince words. He's very direct. But this letter is about Jesus, how he changes people's lives and brings them into relationship with him. But it's also about community and the need that we have for each other. And so it reminds the Colossians and us how to be followers of Jesus. Paul closed his letter by asking the Colossians to pray, to be devoted to prayer, but also to pray for him. And I'm sure they must have kind of felt a little honored that Paul was asking them to pray for him. After all, this was a young church, new believers who'd never met Paul, but no doubt they had heard a lot about him. Because after all, Paul had traveled all over the northern Mediterranean. He had preached the gospel. He had started churches. He had been beaten. He had been stoned. He'd been imprisoned. He was writing this letter from prison. He, could, he would have been very well known amongst the churches in the area. And he was thanking God for them and asking them to pray for him. The church 
in Colossae was the recipient of the gospel message. They had heard it through Epaphras. But now Paul was asking them to pray for him. He wanted this young church to pray for him. And this is such a beautiful example of how we are all equals in the family of God. Paul wasn't up here because he was, you know, this amazing preacher who had started all these churches and, and they're here because they're new. Mm -mm. They're on the same level. They're part of the same faith community, not literally in the small one, but in terms of the family of God. And it's an example of how much we all need each other. In God's family, there is no ranking. We're all equal. And so we need to pray for each other. We need to pray for Christians in other places. And this is what Paul is encouraging them to do. And then he switches gears a little and told them to live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Let's hear that again. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. I feel like we should all have this on our doors at home, like on the inside, so that before we leave our homes, we read this every time before we go out. I think that wouldn't be a bad thing. Live wisely among those who are not believers. Make the most of every opportunity and let our conversation be gracious and attractive. It seems that the church doesn't always have a very good reputation in the world these days. And that makes me really sad. And while Paul told the Colossians how Christ followers were supposed to live, you remember the list, tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, making allowance for each other's faults, love, peace, sadly those qualities don't always describe the church, and I don't just mean us, I mean the church all through North America and the world. If we got that list right, I think churches would be bursting at the seams. But that's a really tough list and a high calling, and I know I don't always get it right. We need to remember that we do it with the strength of the Holy Spirit, and so we need to be in regular communication through prayer with, with God, but also by letting our roots grow deep into Jesus. As a faith community, we have lots of opportunities to interact with people, and many of us have opportunities as individuals too. So let's pray that our conversation is gracious, and attractive so that we will have the right response for people. I know this isn't always easy and certainly doesn't come naturally for most of us. I recently had a situation where I totally dropped the ball. A person I was chatting with, um, and this was, I was away from home, um, a person was sharing their spiritual journey with me. And it was unlike any spiritual journey I had heard before. And I knew that she was very wary of anything that seemed the least bit religious or churchy. And so I just really wasn't sure of how to respond to her. And this conversation happened without warning, and it was fairly quick. And there were other people around, and I shared some things with her, but I really went away feeling like I had really not done well enough with her. And I have continued to wonder how I could have done that conversation better. And so I've decided that I can't fix that and I can't redo that conversation because she doesn't even live in Canada and I'll never see her again. I, I don't have contact information for her, but I can pray for her. And so that's kind of the, what I've decided is the best that I can do. It's not an easy life being a Jesus follower and we won't always get it right. So thank God for grace. 
It might not be easy being a Jesus follower, but when I think of the alternative and life without Jesus and faith and faith community, well, that just looks much harder to me. Recently, a friend passed away, and one of uh, her friends, a mutual friend, said to me, I don't know how people get through this without faith. How they get through this without faith. So it might not be easy being a Jesus follower, but as I said, I think the alternative looks much more difficult. And so may God give us grace. May we learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit so that we can allow him to work in us and that these wonderful qualities can grow in us. And may God give us opportunities to share about him and a gracious response to everyone we meet. Amen. Thank you for that message, Pastor Kim. As we were, as Tracy and I were reading through, yeah, Colossians 3 and 4 and looking for songs and inspiration, I certainly felt that message of how many different aspects of our lives are involved in being heavenly minded and Christ following and that the message of, that Paul gives is that above all, make sure we clothe ourselves in love, which I think is central to so much of what you talked about and so much of what we strive for. And so this song, it's relatively new. We've done it, I don't know, no more than a couple of times at most. Um, but uh, it goes through also just how many different aspects of life are tied to following Christ and following God. And also ends with the message of, if you gave your life to love them, then so will I. And so as we go through this, yeah, stand as you, as you are able, sing along as you feel led and, and can, but let's sing, yeah, sing one more song in response. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, he spoke to the dark. Yes. 
Thank you, worship team. The time, the work, the preparation and practice. You're touching our hearts and connecting us to God. Thank you. And Kim, thank you for opening the book of Colossians to us. Very challenging. There's many things to think about. For the benediction this morning, I leave you with these words from Numbers 6, verse 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen and amen.